back. This is where I take a look at reviews that I did one year, five years, and ten years ago, and tell you what I think about them now. So let's go back a year ago. This was right after Essen. I took a look at Richard the Lionheart. Man, this game I really wanted to like. I liked the idea. It was a team versus team game. Uh, we have the Robin Hood and his crew against uh, Prince John and all that. And you're trying to Robin Hood's trying to get uh, Richard to come back, but only one person per team wins, which is uh, it's good, but it just feels a little less clean than it could have been. Also, got Master's Trials: Wrath of Magmaroth. This is based on uh, basically Dice Town. So the idea here is you build these boards up and you're rolling dice and placing them and it's a cooperative game. It's probably a little too hard and you don't get to build up as much as you like to. It's a good solid game. I just feel like they could have made it a little easier. Uh, then we have Amon Ray the card game. It's an excellent little game. A uh, fun card game about, you know, it's basically they took Amon Ray and distilled it to a card game. I think it was better as a board game. Board game is one of my favorites, but the card game is fine. Then I took a look at, oh, I, I, I forgot to mention Flea from the Fast Forward series. Uh, Flea is a cooperative of the Fast Forward games where you are trying to escape, and I didn't like it at all. It feels very rote. It's just a big group puzzle, and I don't necessarily, it just didn't jive for me at all. I like the theming of it, but it didn't work. On the other hand, I do like the Fast Forward Fear. Fear um, is basically just putting cards at middle table and trying not to go over a certain number, but the game morphs and changes. It's very light, but it was a lot of fun. Also took a look at Terraforming Mars, Venus Next. This was the second expansion for Terraforming Mars. And, and incidentally, it's probably the least used expansion just because it adds extra stuff, like another board and things like that. I like it, but I just don't use it like some of the other stuff I use in every game, practically. Uh, this is still good, though, and I will gladly play it. Altiplano, this one keeps going up for me. I still think I like Orleans better, but then that one keeps going up too. Both go up. Very similar bag pulling game. Just got the expansion. Haven't played it yet for this one, but excited too. This is my rating change without even adding the expansion. All right, let's go back five years ago. All right, first of all, we have uh, Fumpf Gherkin, uh, five cucumbers. I do not like this one. It's by renowned designer Friedman Fries. It is a trick-taking style game. And if there's any kind of game where I felt like this is obvious what you play. This was it. I hate it. I felt like the whole game was programmed. Bleh. Uh, then I have Kings Under Mountains. This game looks cool. has some interesting artwork, but it's just kind of, again, just play the right cards at the right time. Not a fan of it. Raver Run. This is a game which you're playing. It, it, again, it seems like as the years go by, I'm getting more and more picky with how well they look. But even back then, I didn't think this one looked that great. And it was kind of lucky with another generic fantasy theme on it. Outcast Heroes. This game is a kind of a cool theme here where there's an underground Polish thing and you're trying to uh, secretly work together to escape, but it's just too complex, really. Uh, it was okay at best, but I found a time goes by. I don't want to go and figure out exactly what's going on in this game. Uh, Worlds of Tank Rush. Oh, man. Now, this is based on a very popular game. It's a deck-building game and you're fighting tanks. It's just, it has the word rush in it, and it's extremely slow and boring, unfortunately. I mean, I wanted to like this so much. It's so close, but it just doesn't make it. Then we have uh, Walking Dead Best Defense. A Walking Dead game using a very popular thing, a uh, kind of cooperative. It's okay. Uh, Goblins Incorporated, where you're like you're working together as a team. Two people building a, a, a goblin mech together and fighting each other. Some interesting ideas, but ultimately, again, it's just an okay game. Then we jump to Empires of Zadel. This is a deck building game, one you probably haven't heard of looking at it. I like the artwork. I like it. There's, you know, it, it's, it's not as polished as it probably could have been, but I still thought it was a fun game. Trieste is one of the most unusual games on my list because it's, it's three player. And each player has a unique way to win. One person's a thief. They just have these different... Uh, ways it's card play. It's just very unique and interesting. I wonder if this one will ever be reprinted. Seven Days of Westerplatte. This is a cooperative game as you defend against an invasion during World War II. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah, I haven't played it, you know, in five years though. And it's almost one I forgot about till I saw the thing here. But I, I think it's like, it's very niche history, but it's cool. Carcassonne South Seas. I know that a lot of people really like this one. This is their Carcassonne Around the World series. I really like how the tiles look in this one. It's a nice variant on Carcassonne. 
One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Melody and I took a look at this one. One Night Werewolf I enjoyed. When uh, Ted Ausbuck put out One Night Ultimate Werewolf, even better. Just fast, silly, and fun. Uh, then we have Legendary Fantastic Four. Well, this is one of the first expansions for Marvel Legendary and is still one of the best. It was out of print for a while, but it's back in print now. And as you can see, my rating went up slightly because this game just, like I said, just gets better. And then finally, Polterfoss. This is a game in which you roll barrels. The, the tokens are barrels and you're trying to get some of them to stand up straight. And you're basically betting and bidding on them. It's a unique, interesting game. I thought it was fun. All right, 10 years ago, I took a look at Toboggans of Doom, which looks like some crazy, ah, oh, let's make a game and about toboggans and shooting people. And yes, and that's exactly what it looks like. Not very good. Monopoly Town. Yay, there's some a little bit of mechanical pieces. It's a little bit simpler Monopoly and still bad. Hexes. This is where you're building a three by three by three cube, putting in these really cool crystal pieces. It's interesting. It's neat. I like building it, but there's not a whole lot of depth there. Just kind of building these cubes. Uh, grab bag. This is a game that kids will like as they're reaching in the bags and pulling out pieces, different wooden pieces based on how they feel. And finally, Krakow 1325. This is a trip taking game. Uh, but it's a not, a, I mean, it's a big board game where you're putting out pieces and stuff. Probably a little more complex than it needs to be. Trick taking games are fast and furious. This one is not, but there's still some good ideas to this one. I wonder if this one will ever be streamlined and reprinted again. Anyhow, those are the, uh, reviews that I did one, five, and ten years ago. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Look Back on the Dice Tower. <laughs>